I'm going to hit go live on Facebook and it should get online in a second. Okay, we are officially live. I am joined now by Hannah Gardner from 811 Group. Hannah, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, hi. Um, like you mentioned, my name is Hannah. I'm on the internal hiring team for 811 Group. Um, I sit out of our corporate headquarters in Indianapolis where I am with you live right now, actually in one of our uh, director of recruiting's office. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. We might have uh, some additional 811 uh, reps join in. We had a little bit of technical difficulties for the call, so we'll see if they're able to pop in later. But if nothing else, me and you can get started now. So to start, why don't you just tell me uh, just a little bit about 811 Group? You know, what do you guys do? And, and I know obviously you said that you're in uh, Indiana right now, but where are some of your other primary locations? Oh, perfect. And there's Kelsey. Just in time. Hey, Kelsey. Hey, guys. Sorry about that. It made me make a UT account to get on, which I don't know why, but I know because I have a Brooksource one, but I got it. Apparently, Devin had to do this something similar when he was working with Western, so he showed me how to do it. But yeah, sorry about that. No worries. Just glad you could make it. So we really haven't even gotten into much yet. So Hannah just introduced herself. So if you want to introduce yourself as well. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm Kelsey Rowley. I'm our market director here in Nashville. Um, originally from the Columbus, Ohio area and recently moved down to Nashville. Actually, I guess it's been about three years now, but um, yeah, excited to be here. Wonderful. Well, welcome and thank you for joining us. Yeah. So, okay, back to back to our initial question. Uh, if you just want to, uh, I guess either one of you could take this really, but just tell us a little bit about 811 Group and what it is that you guys do and where some of your primary locations are. Yeah, absolutely. Or go ahead, Hannah, did you want to take that? Yeah, I'd be happy to answer. So. Like I mentioned, I said out of our corporate headquarters, 811 Group, overall, we're the parent company um, to a few of our staffing brands, um, but overall, we're at IT recruiting and consulting. Um, we specialize in IT staffing, um, really honing in on the IT department within Fortune 1000 companies and above. We honestly work in a multitude of industries, ranging from retail with Amazon, uh, finance, such as JP Morgan, Chase Bank, um, and even like some of the major hospitals and healthcare companies in the country, um, we are working to fill their internal positions. Um, so like I mentioned, 811 is the overarching company of Brooksource, Metasource, and Calculated Hire. Those are our three different brands or our three different staffing divisions. Brooksource is IT focused, um, in all industries, and then Metasource is healthcare IT, so solely working with healthcare companies, and then Calculated Hire, um, which is our most recent division, is non-technical um, with any company. So we are not just only IT, we're working in finance, accounting, marketing, and HR roles. So we do it all. <laughs> sounds like it. It sounds like it. Um, so what, for looking at kind of what's open right now, what sort of job or, or internship opportunities would be available for students, either you know current students looking for internships or potential recent grads or soon to be grads, um, and how would they find these uh, positions? Yeah, so um, right now we don't have any internship opportunities um, just due to COVID. We're being a little bit more strategic on that end and just don't really see a whole lot of need for them at this time, um, but definitely have career paths in both sales and recruiting. Um, so our 28 locations nationwide, they house all three of the divisions that I mentioned, Brooksource, Metasource, and Calculated, um, but you can take either path. So you can be a full-time recruiter and join uh, the company and grow in that path, or you can join um, being a recruiter at first and then grow into the sales path. Um, so we have opportunities for both in 
all of our locations uh, for the summer of 2021. And we're actually gonna be doing some virtual interviews at UT um, at the very end of October. And the way that you apply for those opportunities right now is through Handshake. You actually can go in and apply um, and then you will be selected if you know, we do consider you to move you forward, you can be selected to virtually interview with us. Um, but aside from that, I mean, on the web, uh, 811group.com, you can apply directly on our website. Uh, through LinkedIn, if you look up the three divisions I mentioned, we have some sales associate positions out there. If you have already graduated or you plan to graduate in December, we still take those into consideration and reach out to you. Um, but yeah, LinkedIn, our website, and through Handshake would be the best chances you'll have at getting a virtual interview with us in October. Awesome, thank you so much. I love when, when I love when, uh, employers are pushing to get on Handshake because as much as I say it, you know, I think it helps when, when I have other people saying it too. We need all our students to get on Handshake, fill out your profile, et cetera. Yeah, that's, it's going to be obviously the most useful tool that we have as of right now, because unfortunately, uh, we're not able to be in person and on campus. So you really need to like spice up your profile, you need to be present and active on there because um, as much as I reach out to you and probably annoy the students of <laughs> applying, um, it's so true. I mean, you'll miss your chance at interviewing if you're not, you know, present on the platform. Wonderful. So as you know, candidates are getting ready to, I'm sure they're hearing this right now and they're immediately logging onto their handshake profiles. <laughs> looking at you know, what makes you know, a good fit for candidates. What sort of experiences are you looking for? What's something that could be on a resume potentially that, that could jump out? And I think either, either of you guys can answer this one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think for me, um, it's not even as much about the experience. Like as long as people are highly involved in whichever activity you're passionate about, I think that's what we look for. Like, I think overall we look for really hardworking people who have like the right aptitude and maturity um, to move into one of our roles, but we're very, very entry-level roles, right? With recruiting and sales. So we're open to more of getting to know people and just showing on their resume that they have been, you know, in a role where they were very driven in the past, whether that be through an employer or maybe it was a fraternity, sorority, sport, um, you know, athletics, it could really be anything, concerts, whatever they were into while they were in college or in high school and that they were committed to that and able to continue to go to that theater. Um, really any of those that can just show they were involved and were able to be social and accountable, held accountable, manage their time correctly throughout college. Um, it really helps us give a better idea of um, the type of person that they were and the type of worker that they would be for us. Hannah, anything you would add or change from that? No, I'm open to all majors. So. Yeah would think just because they're a certain type of major that they wouldn't necessarily qualify. I mean, it's more the soft skills. If you're looking for um, a career where you're able to build relationships, you want to grow. Um, and yeah, it's just the soft skills. Those are not necessarily the most coachable things. You have to come with the right mindset and already having those skills. We can teach you everything else. Right. Awesome. So it sounds like, you know, even though that there's a big focus on IT, there's no actual requirement to have that technical background. It's really just some of the more soft skills, the interpersonal skills, stuff like that ability to learn that is more of a differentiating factor in terms of evaluating future candidates. Yeah, absolutely. I am by no means a technical person. So yeah, definitely <laughs> you hit a nail on the head. Yeah, you do not need to be technical by any means. Um, you'll obviously learn a lot about it while you're in the role. Um, but definitely we're open to all majors and all kinds of backgrounds. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so tell us a little bit about the, the culture at 811 Group. What are some of the perks there? What are some of the reasons that you enjoy working at 811 so much? Yeah, totally. I think for the culture, we always like make this joke that like we could do anything, like even if it wasn't staffing, and I think we would all still work here because we love the people that we work with so much. Um, we always reference the office and we're like, we could be selling paper and we would still all work here um, because of the people that you get to work with and the leaders that you get to work with every day um, that are really invested in like that organic growth throughout the company. So culture, definitely, you know, a huge part with that family mentality, which is one of our, you know, core values, one of our set core values. Um, but then even within that expanding a little bit, that opportunity, we do grow completely organically a hundred percent. So you're never going to get beat out for that next promotion from someone outside of our company. You're always going to be competing within, which is just really nice because it shows how much we invest in our employees and want them to, you know, stay here and be that future leadership for our organization. Yeah, I was going to mention even Kelsey, your story when you mentioned where you started and to where you yeah. are. I mean, now you're overseeing Nashville. 
Um, we barely even touch on like all of the opportunities that you actually can have here and management is definitely one of those. And Kelsey is a rock star and now oversees our whole Nashville office and she didn't even start there, obviously. Um, so I think it's just really cool the growth that you can experience here. Um, it's just also a true testament to that 100% organically grown from within mm -hmm. and then the family orientation of it all. I mean, I love uh, the girls that I sit next to every day. They're some of like my closest friends. And it's, it's really nice when you get off of your eight to five, Monday through Friday, and you still want to hang out with those people. Um, we're just looking for genuine, um, kind people that, you know, want to work for a good company and also want to grow the organization together. So, yeah. So it's interesting that you noted, it sounds like and there's a multiple, you know, career paths available once you're kind of in the door. It's like the two most uh, easiest ac or entry points are is that the HR roles and the sales roles. But maybe Kelsey, could you walk us a little bit through kind of what your career path has looked like specifically and how you've been able to make, you know, changes that, you know, maybe weren't even aligned, it sounds like, to how you initially got started? Yeah, totally. So I came in um, as a recruiter, as um, everyone does when they start with a company. And I started in our Columbus, Ohio market. Uh, and I recruited there for about a year, year and a half and really enjoyed it, but knew I wanted to get into sales uh, and an opportunity opened up down in Nashville for sales. So I ended up making the move down here. Um, my sister had already lived here too, so it made it easy, but made the move into sales here and was in sales for about three, three and a half years and then moved into the market director role. So um, really exciting. Again, like the, the growth is happens very quickly here, which is also exciting because we're still operate as a startup almost, even though we're a massive organization, which is exciting to be a part of. Um, but what's nice is even had I not chosen the market director role, there's so, so many different leadership paths I could have gone down. So I could have moved into maybe one of our national account manager roles where I'm overseeing one of our major accounts, for example, Cigna here in Nashville is one of those um, where I'm overseeing specific things for that account and reps that work specifically on that account na nationwide. Uh, or I could work like moved into a vertical role. So that would have been over retail specifically or automotive or healthcare um, down the recruitment path. Had I stayed within that path, I could have became a team lead and then eventually maybe a regional recruiting manager to see a specific region and all of those recruiters within that region. So like Hannah mentioned, there's so many different opportunities for growth within our organization. And um, yeah, my story um, was super exciting, but even had I not chosen that path, there would have been so many different areas I could have gone into. It don't, it, I mean, it sounds a little cliche to say, but it really does sound like 811 gives you, you know, gives you a lot of tools to succeed in whatever way kind of is fitting your strengths in the moment and, and being uh, adaptable to how, you know, your values, you know, might change over time. It sounds like there's definitely avenues that you could stay within 811 group while changing what that career path looks like. Yeah, absolutely. And even when I came into 811 group, I didn't know I wanted sales. I honestly never pictured myself as a salesperson growing up or even in college. Um, but the great thing is that we, we really harp on trying to find those strengths within each candidate once they get in the door and figure out what they are best for and, and open their eyes to that. Because I think a lot of people don't even realize a lot of their strengths because they're not tested as much in school than maybe they would be once they get into a professional setting. So then once you get in there and see that you actually can achieve different things within different organizations, um, it's really cool how we kind of try to help you shape that and find that path for you. I think it's another good example of, you know, kind of myth busting to an extent that I think a lot of students face the anxiety of, you know, whatever I graduate with, whatever that major is or that first role is, I better like it because I got to work there for the rest of my life and that thing. That's just so not the case at all. But I, I hear it so often from students who are wrapped up in kind of that anxiety of wanting to make sure that you know, I have to make the right decision. It's like, well, don't worry, you've got 40 years <laughs> at least left of working. So it's going to pivot, you're going to change, and that's it's totally normal and fine too. So it's great to hear your experiences through that um, as a testimony that, you know, things change and that's totally fine. Um, and it's even better when you can be at a company that's going to allow those changes to happen without you leaving necessarily. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. So as we were just talking about kind of what, what students are going through as they think about a job search, Right now is obviously uh, not ideal uh, for anybody, really, considering where we're at within the world right now. But what advice would you have for students who are job or internship searching right now in the middle of a global pandemic that's you know still affecting our lives pretty incredibly? What advice would you say to those students? Yeah, I think we could probably both answer this one. I think for me, it's um, I don't know. I wouldn't be too hard on yourself. Like I, and, and I would also be super open to any type of career path. I think we talked about, you just hit on that perfectly. You don't have to find 
your forever 40 year career path in the first year of your job. So I think being open and maybe even exploring things that you wouldn't normally explore and you may find out that that's um, a career that you're really interested in. And then also just don't be too hard on yourself. Like you're probably going to have a lot of interviews and, and go through a lot of different um, processes within different organizations. And if it doesn't work out, at least you got that experience and you're building your resume um, and getting that experience even just within interviewing um, and, and building that up. So then when you do have that job interview that you absolutely want and it's your dream job, you have that experience from previous interviews. Um, yeah, those would be mine. Yeah. So anything to add, Hannah? Yeah, just honestly, don't panic. Yeah. I hop on the phone with a ton of individuals that are just panicked in this time. Good things take time. Uh, it's going to happen. I feel like even despite a pandemic, uh, postgraduates, it takes them quite a while to, to find a job. And you would believe that all of them are like lined up with jobs, but that's not the case. Um, so yeah, so don't panic. Take this time also to, to clean up your resume, uh, button up your social media. Um, and even on LinkedIn, I was just, you know, mentioning that you need to be active on like the platform uh, handshake and just the same with like LinkedIn. So make sure your profile is up to date, uh, make sure your resume is cleaned up um, and yeah, get practice interviewing. Um, but be careful to like look at the job descriptions. Don't just apply to willy nilly anything out there just because you're panicked and want a job. Really carefully read the job descriptions and make sure you feel like you could see yourself doing that and really finding enjoyment in it. And then when you know you go to interview for it, that you it is something that sounds exciting and you are motivated to want to get that job uh, versus the opposite. So just read carefully, uh, don't panic, and clean yourself up. <laughs> I love what you, you you mentioned something there, Hannah, that I think is really really important for students to be thinking about right now and looking at the job descriptions fully and not just you know applying based off the job title. I think that with the necessary flexibility that students are going to need to have while job searching in a pandemic, looking to those responsibilities, the job responsibilities and the skill sets related to it, I think could really uh, help students in the job search where, you know, maybe you, you, you initially pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, you had a pretty clear cut idea of, you know, the type of company you wanted to work for, the type of industry, whatever. And now that there's this whole, you know, wrench is pretty much thrown in that plan completely. So looking at job descriptions to determine, okay, this isn't exactly the industry that I wanted, or this isn't exactly the company that I wanted. But if I looked at the job description and can see a lot of the same skill sets that I would have been needing to use anyways, here's a great opportunity for me to still apply, build those skill sets. And then maybe down the line, I'll have an opportunity to get back into that industry or with that company that I wanted a year down the line, now that I have an extra year of experience under my belt. And it's just such a better strategy, I think, than just being like, oh, it's still harder for me to get in that industry because of COVID. I'll just guess I just have to wait longer. Mm -hmm. And that's just it's 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 not a good mentality to have. So I think, you know, you, you mentioned something kind of brief there, but I really wanted to, to note on that again, because I thought it was really great advice. Um, that's that's good advice always, but especially right now when students are going to need to be so much more flexible um, with their job searching. Yeah, and just educating yourself on different industries too. Um, take this time to surf the web, see what's out there because quite honestly, I had no idea what staffing and recruiting was. I didn't even know what I was gonna get into after I wrapped up school and I was a little panicked myself. I didn't really have like this passion for anything and I came to, to love recruiting and then discovered staffing and recruiting just based on LinkedIn and my now boss just describing to me like what it meant and all of that. And so just educate yourself. It may not be your, uh, you know, the biggest name company out there that you're going after that job, but you could find a, to love it and grow um, a passion for the, the, the now company that you work for or um, not even, you know, realize that that was something that you liked. So don't be closed minded and just educate yourself on what is actually out there because you'd be surprised at what you find. Absolutely. All right. So the, the final question I've got for you today, and we'll see how I know since neither of you are, it sounds like are from the area. Uh, you might, this might be a little bit trickier, but we'll see. But if you've had the opportunity, I guess I'll lead off with to hire uh, a UT Vol or, or interview with UT Vols or anything like that. What is it about um, the volunteers that, that you enjoy? Uh, what about their experiences? Or is there anything specific that you've seen with our students that stands out to you? Again, if I don't know if you've, if you've had the much opportunity to, to interview Kelsey with them or, has, or anything yeah. like that, but yeah, Kelsey you're in the state has. at least, Kelsey. You're, you're, you're just a few hours away. Yeah, and we actually, hired, gosh, I'm trying to think, I was looking out in my office trying to think how many we have now. I think we have 
six or seven bowls now that work in our national market. Um, and we just had to start actually with us last week, which is really exciting. So um, yes, lots of experience with having bowls in our national office, which has been great. I think honestly, I'm also not from the South. So I think, I don't know if this is just like a Southern thing, but um, I mean, the, their ability to like comfortably talk to people like anyone is, is unbelievable. Like they're very, yes, social, but comfortable talking to almost any level of person and very confident. Um, and that's something that we look for a lot in our organization because we are interacting like on the sales side with, um, you know, with CIOs and C-level people. And that's one thing that's been super impressive about the Bulls is that they're very comfortable. And I think a lot of that comes from a lot of networking events when you're in college and a lot of practice interviews, practice conversations um, with anyone. If you have a mentor that you can talk to um, or if you have someone within, you know, career relations that you can talk with really anywhere that you can get that experience talking to someone maybe at a higher level, um, just so that you get comfortable there, it goes a long way once you get started in our organization. Wonderful, Kelsey, thank you so much. Let me just yeah. make sure there's been no additional questions that came through the live. And it doesn't look like there are. So uh, I guess we'll wrap up unless there's, is there anything else that, that you want anyone else watching to know about uh, 811 or any, anything else to provide before we wrap up today? Um, my biggest thing is that we are doing virtual interviews on October 21st. Um, Kelsey and I will be conducting those together. And then the day before, we're actually going to be doing an information session to give you a little bit more insight about, you know, the career paths and educate you on our core values um, to set you up for success for the interview. So your highest chance of getting and being considered for that interview is applying through Handshake. Uh, so go on there. We have our three different divisions listed, um, the sales executive path and the recruiting path for all of those. Um, so if you're interested, please apply or you can send me your resume as well. Um, my information is on Handshake through 811 Group. Uh, but go on there, check us out. Um, I'm sure I've even LinkedIn messaged or a Handshake campaign a few of you already, um, but we will be making selections um, beginning to middle of October for those. So the sooner the better. Um, and yeah, I look forward to, to seeing some resumes come through and we're excited to tell you a little bit more about us and see what we can get. Awesome. And I'm assuming too that info session is in is in the events on Handshake too. Correct. So, so you've yeah. got to get on Handshake. At the end of the day, if you, if you <laughs> want a shot with 811 Group, you have to be on Handshake. Yep. That's how you go to that event prior. That's how you apply for their interviewing. That's how you can reach out to Hannah. I guess you could do that on, on LinkedIn too, technically. Yeah, really, absolutely. On LinkedIn, <laughs> all the above. I mean, that's, you really have to be present nowadays. Communication is key, especially when we're, it's all virtual, no in-person, um, unfortunately. But I hope to return to UT um, next year, maybe at this time, if things have changed, we can only hope for the best at this point, so. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Anything else? No, I mean, Hannah hit it perfectly. We have those virtual interviews coming up. I'm super excited um, to be a part of those and hopefully find some more people to start, you know, get started with us next year. So definitely sign up for those. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much. Today. I really enjoyed it. And I hope I'm sure that our listeners uh, did as well. So thank you so much again. And don't forget, get on Handshake, connect with Hannah, connect with Kelsey. Um, and best of luck uh, for all the students who are going to be interviewing with you all uh, next month. Thank you so much for having us. This has been awesome. Thank you. Wonderful. Take care. Bye.